Good afternoon from Vientiane, Laos. Uh, we arrived yet last night and we went out for a little bit, had a couple drinks, but today is our actual official day that we're gonna explore the city. Um, as of right now, we are going to the Cope, Cope or Cop? I'm not sure if it's Cop or Cope Center, but uh, basically what it is, it's a museum here um, about the bombs um, that were dropped here in the country of Laos. But uh, we're walking there now, we're about 10 minute walk. <clears throat> I wanna show you guys a little history of what they call the secret war. Um, so yeah, we're walking there right now, we'll be there in a little bit and give you a little history lesson. All right guys, so we just arrived to the Cope Center right here behind me. Um, as you walk in, you see a statue here. Check this statue out right here. Apparently the statue is, this sculpture is made from 500 kilograms of UXO, including cluster bombs, in memory of those who've been injured, lost their lives with loved ones from UXO. Wow. Their sign is made of prosthetic legs and arms. Prosthetic legs, arms, hands, and feet. All right, let's take a step inside. I'm not gonna record when I get inside. I'm gonna ask permission first. I don't want anybody to get upset.
here let's walk into the museum itself oh wow look at check this out guys look at this these are what the bombs look like the cluster bombs are here see a lot of young kids a lot of little kids mistake this for like a fruit or a little ball that they can play with and then you know what ends up happening is boom it goes off you know but look at let me show you guys some of the some of the arsenal that was used during the secret war Tons, two million tons of ordnance dropped over Lao. That's every eight minutes, 24 hours a day for nine years. Cluster bombs were just getting dropped. That's wild. And like I said earlier, there is still a ton of um, unexploded ordnance that still need to be found throughout the country um, and things like that. So it looks like this is what they use here, metal detectors to find pieces of scrap metal, things like that. Wow, look at that. Look at this, look at this photo right here. So many bombs. Crazy, huh? Look at this. This continues to be the daily reality of the people of Laos. To reduce the devastating effects of this painful legacy, every day throughout the country, over 3,000 men and women are conducting UXO clearance work. Thanks to their work, as well as ongoing mine risk education programs, the number of new casualties has dropped significantly over recent years, from 302 in 2008 to 42 in 2015. However, Survivors of UXO accidents also need support. In 2012, their number was estimated at 15,000. Many of them are amputees, requiring medical, rehabilitative, and psychosocial services over the course of their lifetime. With the financial support of institutions and private donors from around the world, Hope and its governmental partners centered on medical rehabilitation. Crazy, huh? Crazy. I'm gonna walk. I'm walking to another section of the museum here, and uh, oh, look at this behind me here. Looks like a little house. Oh, I gotta go this way. Cool. Gotta walk in a certain order. But let me see. So we gotta go up into the house. Check this out. It's like a little.
Alright guys, I'm about to walk into another section of the museum here. And look at this. Just tons and tons of prosthetic legs. Tons and tons of prosthetic legs behind me. Look at this. The Cope story. Let me read it for you guys real quick. Cope stands for Cooperative or Orthodic and Prosthetic Enterprise was founded in 1997 with an agreement between the Ministry of Health and a group of NGOs, Power International, World Vision, and the Cambodian School of Prosthetic and Prosthetics and Orthotics. Ortho Orthotics. COPE was created specifically for allow PDR to act as a bridge between international funding opportunities and the needs of local services. COPE has had a number of different partners over the years and now employs a small team of local administrators and two international staff to provide technical support, training, and to manage grants from a number of donors, including USAID, the Australian government, the Norwegian government, CBM, ICRC Special Fund for the Disabled, as well as other donations. Funding is needed for the covering patient costs and the ongoing expenses of materials and clinical supplies, in addition to maintaining and upgrading machines and facilities. Not sure what this. I'm not really sure what this is right here. But, oh man, this is a sad picture. Look at this picture right here. That's a very sad picture. Seeing things like that, especially to little children, it's uh, heartbreaking. You know, really heartbreaking. Cause they're just kids. This is just a fraction of the 1,300 mobility devices made every year at five centers around the country. <clears throat> Your support helps to build a service that will be here for the long, the long term so that legs can be replaced when needed. You know, when you see things like this, it really, it really, really humbles you, you know? You really have to be grateful for the things that you do have in life already, you know? A simple shower, legs, arms, you know, the ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to taste. You know, a lot of us, I think we lose sight of the fact that we're so privileged, or we think that we're not privileged, but we're, in, in reality, we are. Because in my travel so far, you see the way people live out here, and then obviously being here in the museum, you know, you see that people are still living with these ordnance and bombs all over the country. It really makes you appreciate what you do have, you know. Um, but I'm gonna cut this video short. Museum, the museum itself is not too too big, but I just want to show you guys what uh what it looks like in here. Check this out. This case shows three different types of cluster bombs. On the left is the blue 42, which on impact sent out trip wires, which meant the device acted as a landmine. Wow, that's crazy. Oh yeah, you can see it here, look at it. An investigator returning from an accident submitted this piece of paper, which contained fragments and, a ball, and ball bearings from the accident site. One man was killed in this accident. On the far right is a blue 63, 
we still had some of the internal workings showing the, me the mechanism for arming the device. Wild, huh? Super wild. 